Hello again, in this series we're making a lion that's going to walk through a jungle landscape, all going well. In this particular episode I go through the rigging process and show you a tiny bit of test animation at the end. I'm not going to go through the entire process but I will link to tutorials that I have on rigging and making IK, which is inverse kinematics. But what I will show you is what this rig does and roughly how I made it. So first let's see the rig. So I'll turn it on just here. And it looks fairly complicated, but it's not actually too bad because I made it, it can't be that bad. I'm not an expert at rigging or animation, and I'm definitely not an expert when it comes to integrating 3D models into real life scenes. So it's quite a challenge for me and I've been doing lots of research. It's well worth looking up the Humane Rigging course. I can't remember who it's by, but I'll put a link in the description. And that goes really in depth into all types of rigging. So let's take a quick look. The feet are all IK. So inverse kinematics, that means when I move the root bone, the feet stay locked. It's quite important, I would say, to have IK for legs because you want them to be able to stick to the ground when they hit the ground, if that makes sense, so they don't slip around. If they weren't IK and they were all forward kinematics, which is just what your bones basically are when you add them, every time I moved my root, the feet would move with it and therefore I'd have to keep repositioning them each frame. And this looks reasonably good in terms of movement. I'm quite happy actually how the skinning worked out because I didn't do any weight painting and it's all looking okay at the moment. I've added an IK to the tail as well. So when I grab that, it's got a control bone and it sort of moves around like a tail can. And obviously side to side, so he's very happy. I've got my pole targets for the IK just here so that, so that the leg will point to them. And in terms of the IK, there's a control bone that's overlapping the rest of my foot bone. And I can rotate that and rotate the foot because it's got a copy location with the foot bone. And the IK goes up three chain lengths, so one, two, three. Normal legs would only go up two. You'd have the shin bone and the thigh bone or the femur and tibia. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> but in this case, it's going three up in both the back leg and the front leg. That was the first thing I was unsure about, because obviously, because these creatures have three long bones, whereas we only have two. And at first I was thinking I'd just move it from here, but no, three makes a lot more sense, as you can see here, as it moves. The hair kind of moves with it. I think that's okay. It looks fairly all right and it keeps its structure and shape fairly well. These bones along here are just support bones in a sense. So obviously the bone that's controlling all this area around here is quite far away. And some people sort of put them in the middle. I like to kind of position them where they ought to be on the animal, although that would be a bit higher up normally. So I have this bone attached so that when I add the skinning, it added this section as part of this bone. Otherwise, there'd be a lot of problems with this bone moving and warping this shape here, and I would have to reskin all that area. But as it happens, it's not too bad because of these supporting bones down the middle, which you can hopefully see there. There's one more just there. Now, I was thinking about using the animal rig that I think comes with Rigify. If I go back to object mode and press shift A, under armature there is an animal rig. And I did actually use the cat rig as a basis, but I deleted a lot of the bones that I didn't need. There was a whole sort of facial structure, lots of extra small bits around the feet. And it was a bit over complicated for what I needed. And to be honest, I find Rigify a little bit awkward when I apply the rig. It seems to take quite a lot of work in order to make your mesh fixed to the armature. So I just modified the rig slightly and kind of made it my own. I gave it a jawbone. And again, the skinning's not turned out too bad. The hair does move a fair bit and the top of the face moves slightly. So I will have to tidy that up a little bit, but it hasn't really been too noticeable so far on the animation that I've done. And I've got an eye control bone here and you can hopefully see the eyes moving around. It's a little bit tricky because the bones are right in the center. And I pretty much copied the advice from the Humane Rigging series to set up those eyes. So if I move this over here and then hide my rig, you can see both eyes looking this way. 
it's a bit too far let's bring it back slightly there there we go we can see them both looking that way and if I bring it over here they should look the other way there we go what I will eventually do is some shape keys for the face that's what I'm most comfortable with because it's sort of a sculpting workflow but I won't go too far again because of the reflections I can hide a fair bit of the anatomy and the sort of detail in the face and stuff like that because it's so shiny you won't really see those minor details so much so I can get away with a bit it looks kind of like a statue at the moment and that's fine in terms of communication with the client I've sent away just a quick pose to show that I've got this far and they've got back to me and said they're going to pay me for this first section they haven't said how much and they've said they've got to go back to the producer I still don't quite know what to think yet but we'll see how we go it can be a tricky thing this process and they are going to pay me through PayPal and I believe you have to wait for the funds to clear with that sort of thing so I've just got to check up on that so here's the final test animation there's still a lot of work to be done and it is just a test and I've still got lots of research to do about integrating things into live action footage and I'm a tiny bit concerned about the quality of the footage I'm going to get through and whether I'm going to have to model a lot and do some map painting perhaps it's all good fun but it's all very time consuming as well but I hope you're enjoying the process and following along with me thanks for all the advice and feedback it's very gratefully received do keep commenting with your thoughts and I'll see you next time